who's ready to see a great chess game tonight? Yeah, all right. Playing white is Doug Bromstadt, USCF 1100. Our hero black is me, Michael Kummer. Yay, I wonder who's gonna win. All right, first things first, we flip the board. All right, he starts out D4, the queen pawn up two. All right, so the best way to counter that is with D5. All right, he plays that, you play that. How hard is it? All right, so knight to F3, protects the pawn. Pretty boring stuff. So we attack the knight. Now, what should white play to get an advantage here? He should bring his knight to e4 and harass the bishop. Okay? But he fails to. He plays e3. So e3 is a weak move for two reasons. One, it pins the knight, and two, it blocks in this bishop. All right, so no good, okay? So when black plays e6, he doesn't have the same problems that white has. White blocks that guy in, while mine is free to jet around, okay? So now he plays g3. Very confusing. Like, where do you want your bishop? Here or here? You can't have them both, okay? So, so try not to push both those pawns, okay? One or the other, all right? All right, so black counters with c5, very logical. Bishop to g2. Knight to c6. Just pouring everything on this d4 square. All right, castles. So now I want a castle, so I want to bring out some of my pieces, all right? So knight to f6. Now he doesn't want me hanging around with the pin, so h3. All right, should we capture pin pieces? No, unless there's going to be some kind of big advantage, never capture pin pieces because it just relieves all the pressure. So forget that. So bishop to h5. And I'm not afraid of g4, just because it would ruin his castle even more. All right. So, so now he's got this bishop that's stuck. Like he couldn't have seen that coming a long time ago. So he plays b3. Where's this bishop going to go? I guess there. But so now I need a plan to try and keep this pawn here permanently to keep this bishop bad permanently. Make sense? All right, so obviously take it. Can he take back with the knight? No, because it's a pinned piece. He doesn't really want to go there either. And he can't take back with the queen because my knight takes it. So he's got to play pawn takes, all right? But now his bishop's kind of good again, so <laughs> that wasn't a good idea. But, but it makes b3 look kind of silly, though. All right, so bishop to d6. And he decides, hey, you know, I play b3, I might as well put my bishop there and <laughs> make, him, make him a superstar over there. But not quite. All right, so now I get castled. He's got to get his knight out. Knight B to D2, B5. I, I just don't want him to play C4. But he, guess what? He's like, I'll play it anyway. I don't care. I don't care about nothing. So I got two players on this, and he's got two. So the math checks out. So, so now I'm saying, well, I play B5. I'm taking you, OK? So, so he takes, takes. Pwn takes. Now. Who is undefended in the white camp? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, look, this guy's pretty undefended. Should I harass him? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Rook to b8. 
That's where the rook wants to go anyway, on this long open file. That's where, that's where the rooks go. All right. So he decides, hey, I'll protect them. All right, so your queen's a nine point piece. All right. You think it likes just babysitting a three point piece? Is that very fun? Is that how you want to spend a Friday night? Just hanging around, guarding this bishop? I don't think so, all right? So now, queen is now, she's got a job, protecting the bishop, all right? Out of the pen. So I don't like that. So now I'm gonna try to distract the queen, like, please go away, please, please just go, so I can take the bishop for free. Make sense? All right. But he's a little bit smarter than that. So he decides, oh, okay, I'll put my queen back here. So now it's still protecting the bishop. So it didn't really work out too well for me, all right? So now we got a tactic, all right? We can play some hope chess. Who, who likes hope chess? Yeah, yeah, everybody likes hope chess. If you can't hear, the crowd erupted with laughter. Yes, hope chess. That's the way I win most of my games. But I decide I'm, I'm going to play good today as well as I can, okay? And decide not to play hope chess. Hope chess would be, I'll take you, knight will take, and then I get bishop here. All right, forking the rook and the knight. So if he moves his rook, obviously I'll take, obviously I'll take the bishop, but he takes, rook takes. I would have played this to be quite honest with you, but then I saw at the end, my hope chest doesn't really work out because he gets the knight. But if that didn't happen, I probably would have gone into that variation, sad to say. But there's another way. I don't even have to play hope chess, and I can hopefully win a pawn. Anybody? And I give you a hint. It's very much just like the same variation. Very good, very good. Our, our, our uh, famous uh, player in attendance, everybody's heard of him, Grandmaster Ken West, shouted out the right answer, yes. All right, yeah, you just go straight for it, okay? So now, rooks attack, pawns attack, so he's got to move the rook. I'm sure he's going to pick the right spot for the rook, yep. So now take with the bishop, knight takes, because whenever somebody takes something, you have to take it back, okay? It's just, it's natural, all right? So just take it back, whether it's good move or bad. And so now I got a pass pawn. I'm, I'm loving this, okay? And obviously the queen can't take this or else bye-bye bishop. All right, rook takes bishop. Everybody got that? All right. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? It's not even our move. So the bishop goes to f1, all right? Makes sense. Not really, because this bishop was really good on this long diagonal. He had a lot of uh, attacking chances, like he moves his knight. Guess what? My knight would be under attack here. Makes sense? So he takes his bishop from the good diagonal to the bad diagonal, because he, he's a little scared of this pawn, OK? A little scared, a little scared. All right. So, instead of protecting this pawn, which I do like a lot because he's passed, he's good, I decided to make a threat greater or equal to that. So, so what's greater or equal to that pawn? This bishop. So queen to b6, all right? So now my queen is operating like a 14-point piece, okay? That's how much power he's got behind him, all right? Because he's got that rook backing him up. That's the best way to do it, is to uh, power on the pieces. They either attack the same square or get behind them and just, uh, just make them stronger than their, than their uh, maximum capacity, all right? So queen to b6. So he decides to protect it. Rook to b1, makes sense. All right, bishop to b4 attacks the rook and also uh, threatens the move c3. So he decides, I'm not going to move the rook. He's making a stand. He's making a stand. So if you were going to make a stand in this position, 
What would you play? And I'm not moving the rook, he says. Any, any guesses? Any guesses? Any guesses? Bishop c3. Bishop c3. Thank you. So, and now who's in a pin? I'll give you a hint. It's my black bishop, okay? <laughs> so, oh, is it a black bishop? <laughs> the black bishop is in a pin. So now it's like, uh oh. That was a mistake. All right. So I got to get out of the pin. So queen to a5, and I'm also hitting this square. All right. The a pawn. All right. So he decides, I'll take you. I obviously don't want to take with the queen, so I take, knight takes b4. And if he takes, I, I, I'm going to just take his uh, pawn and we'll trade and all that good stuff. So he plays a3. All right. So there's only one move I should be considering. The only move that possibly saves this pawn. And it's a fork. The knight's only trick. So everybody assumes I go here, which I do. So he takes, I take. So now my pawn is only two away from becoming a queen. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. I'm getting excited, all right? So what do you think white plays to try to stop me? First things first, he's got to trade, OK? He just has to, all right? <laughs> He wants to. All right. So now his queen isn't going to be bothered with uh, protecting that rook. Okay. So now his queen's free to do whatever she wants now. Okay. So, so she's not pinned anymore. She's not guarding a bishop. So she can become a force now. Who thinks he's actually going to make it a force? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. But, but she's free to become a force if she wants to. All right. So rook to d1. This is where you want the rook, right behind it on the queening file, OK? That way, there's going to be no shenanigans, all right? There's no way I'm ever going to be able to actually get it up there, OK? So that's where you want the rook, right on the queening file. In these end games or games like this, that's where you want it. Because too many cool tricks can happen when this rook is not actually on the queening square, OK? So, so that was good of him to put it right behind there. All right, so I do not want to be back row checkmated. I hate that more than anything in the world, all right? So now, by playing h6, my rook is free to do whatever he wants to do, all right? Rook to b8. All right, so, but you say, hey, you just lost your pawn, OK? And I did. But I have this really cool move, I think. Queen to f5, a triple threat. Can you believe it? But little did I know, he doesn't have to lose any of this stuff. So this guy's protected, right? Everybody agree with that? He's protected by the rook, in case you don't understand that at home. All right. so. All we have to do is protect the rook and the pawn. Can anybody do that simultaneously? Anybody? Queen to e3. Queen to e3. Does, unfortunately, queen to e3 only protects the rook. Queen f1. Queen f1, very good. All right. So now this is very discouraging. I just gave up. My pass pawn for nothing, because I could not see his defense of queen f1. All right, so wh what do you think? I I'm mad now. I'm really, really mad. All right, so what move do you think you make when you're mad? <laughs> a bad one. H5. A, uh, H5, close. G5. We're going to go for it, OK? So king to g2. So, so now I decide, pin the knight, OK? All right, so pin the knight. So he's like, OK, I don't like to be pinned. So he plays king h2. 
All right, so you might as well follow through with your plan, even if it is boneheaded, and play g4, all right? All right, so the knight goes to a good square, e5, all right? So now, if you look, now this pawn is in not a pin because this rook is really, really protected, all right? So what can we do here? Just follow through with the plan. Follow through with the plan. That's the reason why I played g4, g5 to take here. How should he take back? I don't think it matters, but does it matter? What would uh, black play if he took back with the queen here? What's a really cool thing to threaten? Rook to b1, threatening checkmate. Either with the rook or the queen, it doesn't matter. Pew. All right. So, all right. No need to give him that counterplay, so he takes back with the king. All right, all right. So rook to b3. And white really just doesn't have to do anything. And, and this, this really infuriated me, all right? Because you think, wow, I just threatened your rook. Come on, either move it or trade it or something, OK? But he just stands there, OK? Because the queen is protecting it. So very, very frustrating, OK? All right, so think about that when you're playing defense, OK? Even though they're threatening you, if they're threatening you with the same piece value or, or greater piece value, you can just hang tight, just stay tight. You don't have to panic, you don't have to move, you don't have to trade. You can just improve your position by playing king h2, okay? All right, so, so now I decide, okay, I'm going to pin you now. Queen to b5, all right? So queen to d1, rook to b1, but it doesn't have the same bite as it did before, right? And in fact, now, where should this queen go? Because obviously you want to move it. OK, queen to d2. OK, so, so that's, that, OK, so, so you'd be uh, hitting, if, if the queen went to d2, uh, you'd be hitting h6. And then, and then even if you took, and I took your, well, I still can't even, can't even take your rook. Yeah, queen of d2. Let's see what the, uh, what the uh, computer ends up saying. Forget the computer for a minute. All right. All right. So the move that was played, queen of d2 might not actually be that bad. It might, it might be good. Because by playing queen of d2, I can't really even offer a, a successful queen trade. With queen f3, now white is on the attack here, OK? Black has been on the attack the majority of the game. Obviously, his attack didn't get as good as he wanted it to be. So now, um, you know, so now he's on the attack. And sometimes you just have to face the facts, OK? Even though you might have been winning the whole game, things change, OK? So, so now that I know that I'm on the defense now, I got no chance to checkmate him. My knights are under attack. Things aren't going well. I'm going to have to just offer the trade, begrudgingly, but you just have to go for it, OK? So now, so now he's got to trade. If he takes the knight, obviously, Checkmate by either the rook or the queen. So he's got a trade. Yeah, right. <laughs> or he could do his defense where he just uh, moves his king around and, and lets me do all the trades. All right. So this is an easy one. Should we, uh, should we make our pawns into four pawn islands or should we keep, uh, <laughs> keep these guys as a uh, as a unit. Yeah, let's keep them as a unit, OK? I like islands. OK, <laughs> yeah. So, so if you count at home, 
a pawn island are pawns by themselves. So each has one, two, three, one, two, three pawn islands, okay? So, so if you're playing as either side, you should be like, huh, I should be attacking the guys that can't be protected by other pawns because then their big pieces have to stay and guard them, okay? So much easier to attack pawns all by themselves on an island than connected ones. Make sense? All right. So knowing this, what do you think white plays? <laughs> he obviously attacks the connected one, right? Who won? All right, rook to f3. So how should I protect it? So I'm just begging for somebody to say this. What's the worst move in all of chess? <laughs> H5, F6, weak in all positions. Even this one, it's a weak move because then he can come in here and, and harass me some more, okay? So we'll get to F6 in, in every edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. All right, so never play F6. So if you can't play F6, you got to play F5, right? All right. So even in the end game, F6 still doesn't work, okay? All right, so he's the side. All right, well, that failed. I guess I moved my king around some more. All right, king to g1. So he attacked a connected pawn. So I'll attack an unconnected one on an island. All right. So see how easy that was. All right. So now he's got a struggle. How in the heck am I going to protect this guy? If I wasn't looking at the sheet, I don't even know. All right, so it's going to be tough. Rook to d3, yep. So he's right back at it. Okay, so my opponent is lower rated than I am by a lot, by almost uh, four or 500 points. So I figure I can beat him in an end game. All right, so now knight to c3. Because his pawns are both over here, so I should be able to get one of these, hopefully. Knight to c3, knight to c5. All right. So he's attacking my pawn. All right. So even though I could, I could probably counterattack with this fork, right? Attacking that and that. All right. But in an end game, all right, I only have four ways to win, right? If you think about it, I have to promote this guy, this guy, this guy, or this guy. If I don't do one of those things, I'm never going to win the game. All right? So, so especially when you're, you're going for a win and not a draw, which you should be, whether you're playing white or black in this position, just uh, try to keep the material. Does that make sense? Because if he gets this guy, all right, say, say I do play here, okay? And I'm like, yeah, I forked your pawns, way to go. And he takes this, my chances of winning have diminished, okay? So it's true I get this guy, and now he's going to have to stop him. But if you see, that's probably not so difficult. He can play there and there and blockade my pawn, and it's going to be really tough for me to ever win, OK? And there's no reason for me to trade a connected pawn for one on an island that hopefully I should be able to get later on in the game, because it's going to be really tough for him to, to guard this A pawn forever, OK? So, so knowing all that, what move did I make? All at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, king f7. No reason, no reason to trade. All right. So, all right, a4. It blocks my, uh, you know, blocks everything. All right, a4. So I need a king to the center of the board. King e7. King f3. King to d6. All right, I'm coming in. King to e3. 
This is getting this is getting pretty intense. King to d5. King to d3. All right. So here's the moment of truth. All right. So luckily I, I've been playing pretty fast, and I still have probably about an hour on my clock here. All right. It's probably the longest I ever thought about a move in my life. All right. I probably thought about 40 minutes on this move because it's pretty big. Because because if I play my knight over here. I'm never going to win. I play my knight over here, never going to win. All right? If I play my knight here, OK? So he could basically uh, force a draw here. Everybody see? And I do not want to draw this guy, OK? So what move do you think I analyzed for 40 minutes? Knight e4, OK. All right, so if I play knight e4, there's two variations I have to analyze to completion here. All right, so obviously he's going to take. Because if he plays here, I'm just going to take his knight, pawn takes, king takes, game over. Everybody make sense? All right, it makes sense to me. All right, <laughs> and that's all the match. All right. And obviously, yeah, if he play, he's not going to play f3, f4, because I'll just take. All right? So, so obviously, what move is he going to play instantly? Obviously, he's just going to take, right? He can't wait to take. Even if I sit there for 40 minutes, as soon as I make the move, he's going to take. All right? Even though I could just say, hey, you just lost. I calculate out every single variation. You're done. He's going to take it instantly anyway. All right, so check. All right, so. So now, not only do I have to analyze king to e3, I have to analyze king to c3. All right? Just for uh, grins, which, which, which way do you want to analyze first? This way or this way? Whoever says something first, which way? e3. e3, OK, e3. All right? So what do we do? <laughs> um, E5. No. No. We want to win this pawn for free. So first things first, we have to play Well, this will be fun to edit. <laughs> All right. First we got to play uh if we can uh, if we can, uh, 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 h5. All right? So that prevents him from playing g4. Is that okay with everybody? Because if he plays the move g4, we might be in a lot of trouble. All right, so he could play his pawn here, and we'll just play our pawn there. If he plays pawn to a5, we'll play pawn to a6, meaning, guess what? It's his move. And what, what would he have to play then? All right. So he, oh, yeah. All right, John. Man, I wish I was playing you in this position. I would gain about 50 rating points. So I get you. All right. Uh-oh. This is looking pretty bad for me. This is looking really bad for me. Oh, but he's... He's so close. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, Jonathan? <laughs> Check. You want to go toward the queen. Check. I'll take you. And then once he gets behind the pawn, there's no coming back. Okay. So that so that got to move 58. And I move 45. So I had to calculate 13 moves that way that that was going to be a win. All right. The whole thing about that, the whole key, like in the other variation we'll see, is the move h5. Okay. Meaning that when he moves, 
he's going to eventually have to move away from this pawn. Because if I didn't have the move h5 in, okay, and he plays, well, he would play a whatever. So, check, oh, so it's my move. So if I played like a5 or something, okay, and he got in the move g4, see how I would have to abandon my pawn and he would take? E5, you and your E5, I don't want to trade that pawn. Ah, position. Uh, we, I mean, the computer will say equal probably. All right, does that make sense? But the whole point is you get H5 and then you just win. Yeah. And then it's going to be the same thing this way as well. Okay? So h5, do you want him to push the pawn now or, uh, or not? It's up to you. You're playing, you're playing white. You, if, you think, if you think you got a better chance playing that, it doesn't because when I play a6, now you can't get in there. You see? All right. So, so that's pretty much, we'll play it out for everybody at home. So after h5, king here, but you're still going to be too slow as white. Not by much, but all you have to be is just slow by just one move. So tempo in the end game, very important, needless to say. You're really slow. All right. So if you have a pawn on the third rank, it doesn't take very long for you to uh, get the queen going, okay? But let's, uh, let's all see how the 1100 ended up playing that. You think he played in any of those variations? <laughs> no. no. So, so this, this, this is worth the price of admission, okay? All right, so, so we had those two variations. I guess he calculated out. In the 40 seconds, he, he made to play the move that, hey, both those variations, man, I'm just going to be a little bit too slow because of that, that killer h5, okay? So, so I guess he saw that. So he plays king to c3. I do play the move h5, obviously. He plays a5. All right, so obviously I have to play the move a6 because I don't want to abandon my space of the pawn. All right. All right. So now he plays a, a doozy of a move here, f4. All right. f4. So what do you think we should do? Take on passant. On passant, yes. The best move in all of chess, all right? Boom. What happened? I guess he didn't know about that rule, because now I got a passer. And now he's in a lot of trouble. So I better go try to save him. King to d3, f2, king e2, king takes, king takes, and now it's just a matter of time. Boom, 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 the slow march. And he can't take it anymore, okay? Game over. All right, so. So hopefully you got a lot out of that. You can play, uh, play defense by not even moving your pieces, right? If, if your piece is already protected and uh, you know, they're attacking it with the same amount of pieces, you can just ignore the threat and let them take and then you take back. All right, that's what Doug taught us, all right? What did I teach you? When in doubt, when you're mad, just push the G-pawn, go for a kingside attack, okay? And in the end game, you have to actually calculate. Because one miscalculation, you lose. All right? Also in the end game, try not to trade your pawns because that's the only way you're ever going to win by promoting a pawn. All right? Makes sense? All right. Hopefully you'll come back next week for another installment of uh, Beginner Breakdown. Thank you all in the live audience.